is a privilege to be able to uh, be used of God in an hour like this when we are hurting, when we need help, when we need encouragement, when we need strength. Uh, some of you I recognize your faces, but some of you I do not know. But uh, it's not important that you know who I am. It's important that we know who God is and that he is the God of all comfort. In your paper there, you'll notice it talks about God has not always promised skies always blue, flower stroke pathways. All our lives through, God has not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. But God has promised strength for the day, rest for the labor, light for the way, grace for the trial. Help from above, unfailing sympathy, undying love. God shall wipe away all tears from your eyes. You know, at a time like this, we all have mixed emotions. We all struggle what to say to each other. But God knows every heart, and he knows what you need here. Need is to God will strengthen us and God will encourage us. And we're here to celebrate Tommy Lee's life. We're here to, to honor him. At 76 years. You know, how do you do that in just a few moments? How do we find ourselves uh, as a family to be able to uh, look at 76 years and, and just as you few moments and to share what we would like to say. We can't. But by the time we finish this service and by the time God begins to bring healing and help to our hearts, I think we'll be able to say we celebrated his life and we can continue to do that. And I just want to open with a short prayer right here and then we'll get back into the service. Father, Lord, I am here with a family that needs more than just the words of a preacher. They need the word of God. They need to be reminded who God is and what God has done for us. Lord, you sent your son over 2,000 years ago as a gift of this world. Most of the time we talk about Christmas and we talk about the birth of Christ. But Lord, we don't hear a lot about the death of Christ. Because it was the death on the cross as a sacrifice for sin and as a substitute for sin. It made Tommy's life differently. It is our faith, our trust, our hope in God as our Savior that makes a time like this different. It's a time that we can find ourselves being encouraged because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And it's not because of who we are and what we've done. It's because who we believe in and who we put our faith in and our trust. May you encourage this family through the words we have to say today and the songs that are sung. For we pray in Jesus' name.
minister of the gospel, years ago the Lord allowed me to start doing a lot of funerals, and I've done a ton of them over the years. But I always try to bring healing to your broken heart. And the way to do that, man, is to let you know what God's word says about life and death and eternity. The second thing is to give hope to those of not, that do not know Jesus Christ. You see, about the the only time we gather together like this is at weddings and his funerals. And but here's an opportunity to us to remember that one day we all the main question is, are we ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ? And to give hope to those that don't know Jesus, that, you know, as long as we have breath in this body, we have an opportunity to turn to the Lord and to walk with the Lord. And then to honor the life of Tom Lee. And I hope we can do that today. You know, I quit looking at, at funerals the way that I used to as a young boy. When I heard the word funeral as a kid, I'd always get nervous and all shook up, and, and I didn't like it. But then the, as I become a pastor and a minister, I began to change from calling it funerals to a celebration of life. And that's what we hear is to celebrate totally life. And... Not only are we celebrating here in this service, but you'll be celebrating it later on as uh, you'll see as I talk about things upon this. But I think about a, a scripture in the book of 1 John 5, 11 that says this. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. You see, God has offered to every man, woman, boy, and girl eternal life. He's offered it to you. He's offered it to me. He offered it to Tommy. And then in verse 12 of 1 John 5, it says, He that has a son has life. And he that has not the Son of God has not life. And so the Bible is very plain. It says, if you got Jesus, you got eternal life. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what the Bible says. Now, it doesn't say anything else about it. He said, that's the most important thing. You don't say if you got a new car, a new house, a good job, you've got friends, you got family. It doesn't say anything like that. It doesn't say if you got faults and failures and sin. It says if you got Jesus, you got eternal life. Now there's no perfect person. Well, there was one called Jesus Christ. But they crucified him. They criticized him. They talked about him. They destroyed him. They done everything to get rid of him. Of him. But he was the way, the truth, and the life. And every one of us here today have faults and failures. Tommy had faults and failures. But Jesus doesn't look at that. He looks at his blood that's been applied to the heart of others. You know, I wish I could be here today and take away all of your grief and all of your hurt and pain. I can't, but I can give you some encouragement. We're here to celebrate. We're celebrating the Father. We're celebrating a granddad. We're here celebrating a, a brother, an uncle, a neighbor, a friend. That's what we hear today. But I want to say to the family today, to the sisters and brother and the daughter and the, the granddaughters and them that are, that are here, Psalms 32 a it says, I will instruct thee. I will guide thee. In the way which thou will go. Man, the life is hard as it is. But when we start losing our loved ones and our and our rocks and our ones that we trust and ones that was our family and ones that were our dad or mom or whoever, it's hard. But God said, I will guide thee with my eyes. Always remember, he's God is always looking over you. And always remember that you can go to him. Dad can't call on you anymore, but you can always call God, your Father, and say, Father, I need him. And to, to the other family members here today, Psalm 62 through 8 says, trust in him at all times. Pour out 
grouchy heart before God. Now, what does that mean? It means this. When you're hurting, you say, God, I'm hurting. When you need help, you say, God, I need help. Even when you're mad, you say, God, I'm mad. But God, I don't understand. And God can help us in that. And he said, pour out your heart before me. He said, God is a refuge for us. Now, every one of us have a grief differently. Some of us fall apart with tears. Some of us have regret. Some of us are stunned. Some of us are, are shaken. And we, we don't know where to turn. We don't know what to do. But grief is something that is normal. It's something that God allows us all to go through to bring healing and help. And it's healthy for us to grieve, to cry, to, to get our emotions out. The worst thing to do is try to hold it in and not express it. But facing death comes pain, comes sorrow, comes hurt, comes disappointment, comes fears. These are real things that we face as humans. Sadness, anger, fear, guilt, regret, all kinds of emotion. But also there comes that spiritual help, grace and mercy. Peace and joy and comfort. And so don't be afraid of your feelings. God's shoulder can handle anything that you cast on Him and that you give to Him. That's who God is and what God wants to be in our lives. We see the ugly side of death, we see the horrible part of death. But God's got a beautiful part. And when we die, and, and when Tommy passed away, he quit breathing here, but he started breathing on that. No more struggles, no more sickness, no more suffering, no more pain. The Bible says God does away with all of that, including death. He takes it away. Now, you, you probably have heard me preach your own funeral. Tommy Lee preached his for 76 years. Jerry, he done a good job with it. Then as we find things, we look at all this, Carol, whatever, whatever, we find that we see that we we preach our own funeral. And you say, where do you get that from? Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, it says this. You are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. So, Paul was saying to them that people are reading your life every day. Even from a baby, all the way up, you have been reading Tommy's life. Think about it. 76 years, he revealed his life. And he said that you are our epistles, not written with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, on, not on tables of stone, but on tables of flesh, that is, of the heart. Now, every day, somebody is reading your life. Every day, they're reading mine. Sometimes they read our actions. Sometimes it's our attitude. Sometimes it's our, our sins. Sometimes it's our shortcomings. Sometimes it's our beauty. Sometimes it's our compassion. Sometimes it's our care. Sometimes it's our love. Sometimes it's our joy. Sometimes it's our anger. Sometimes it's our brokenness. Whatever it is, they read our lives every day. They read Thomas. You read Thomas. You've seen him. You know, he entered into this walk of life on July the 22nd, 1945. And that's when it started. His life. And did you know that God kept a book of his life all the way through? God kept a book from the time he was born from his mom and dad, Thomas, and, and I'm going to say this name wrong. Didn't he? Okay. From the time they brought that little boy into their life on July the 22nd, he started his own book his own chapters, his own verses, his own life. And we find that there's things that he made choices in that were beautiful and 
great. And then there were times that his choices might have not been the greatest. But they're all recorded, just like for you and for me. He, he went home to be with his Lord on February the 9th, just a few days ago to Steve's County Hospital. And from the time of July the 22nd to February the 6th, he lived his life and shared his life with, with different folk and people read it all his life. He lived mostly here in Stevens County. And we, and we find that he was born in Florida, but he had lived here. Jerry, there's sweat, things that you can tell us and things that you know, Denise, Brenda, Carolyn, you all know things that you can share about him. Proceeded in death by his wife in 2011, Cynthia. Had two children, Amanda and Christopher. We know Christopher was not able to be here uh, today. But when we talk about knowing the rid of all men, there's a life that the family knew, knew about Tommy Lee. You know, Amanda, you can tell things as uh, being a daughter that's different than a sister or a brother or a niece or a nephew or a cousin or whatever. There's things that the family knew about Tommy that, that the outside world didn't really know. I mean, y'all can tell me what kind of food he liked, what, what kind of hobbies he liked, what kind of music, what kind of things that he enjoyed because family knows these things. They see inside those four walls growing up, the three girls can tell us things that how he would pick on them or take things away from them or aggravate them that nobody else would know that side of Tommy. But you do because you're, we're all known and read of all men. And so we find that, that we all have stories and we all have things that we can say about Tommy today. You could get up here. Well, you said, no, I ain't getting up there. But if I asked you to, to give me something about him, y'all could do that because you knew him as family. As family. And then there's a line that friends knew about Tommy Lee that is different than what, what uh, family knows. You know, those that he went to school with. Those that he worked with as a salesman. Those that, that friends that he had from, from young all the way up. The line that friends knew about him that's totally different. They could tell you things that he might have done that you didn't know as a family that he done. It amazes me when, when family gets together and they lose a loved one, they talk about things, and then a friend would come on and say, well, did you know Tommy helped me out when I had this going on? Or Tommy was involved in this, or Tommy done this. And you're like, wow, we never knew that. Because that's the way life is. There's things that we don't know as family that friends know about us. Then there was a life that neighbors knew about Tommy Lee that was different than friends and different than family. Neighbors. You know, neighbors know when you come and go. You ever know that? Well, from Fowler Road, y'all know that. But anyway, we know that. We know that they know when they're going. My neighbors today, they know when I'm coming in, when I'm going out, while they know the vehicle I drive. They, they know they know on Sundays, every morning I'm going to church. They don't have to ask. They know, they know I do it all the time. They know when I go to work. They know when I come home. They know things neighbors know. I even got a neighbor that, that's uh, kindly to see. Hmm. Knows me, I guess you'd say. <laughs> they know everything about me. They even know things that I didn't know about myself. They'd say, well, you did this. And I'm like, I remember doing that. Yeah, I, I was watching through the binoculars there. <laughs> oh, okay. But what I'm saying, we're known and read of all people. We do things we don't realize we're doing it sometimes. But people know it. They see it. They know it. Then there's a life that co-workers knew about him as a salesman. Now, I'll tell you, 
As a salesman, you meet all kind of people. You meet all kind of business. You meet all kind of things. You run through all kind of stuff. And sometimes Tommy had to put the smile on like, man, I hate being in this place, but hey, how did you do it today? Why? You need to buy the product. We need to sell. We need to do the thing. We need to, when things on this, these are things that, that people knew and co-workers knew and business people knew of Tommy that, was, that you don't even know about. And I bet if you go back to some of those places, you would find people that would, that would say, oh yeah, I remember that. Now some of them was like, man, I'm glad Tommy's coming today. We need this product. Then there's others that like, oh man, another salesman coming. We're all known and read of all people in different ways. But let me tell you, no matter what family thought and knew about Tommy, no matter what friends thought and knew about Tommy, no matter what neighbors knew and thought about Tommy, no matter what co-workers knew and thought about Tommy, the life that really counts is the life that God knew about Tommy. Did you know that God knows everything about you and I right now? He knows those that really love him, and he knows those who just put the show on him. He knows everything about us. That's the life that counts. And that's the life that is important. And when we leave this earth and we stand before our Heavenly Fathers, it's not important about family. It's not really important about friends and neighbors and co-workers and, and acquaintances and all of this. It's what did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? And I want you to know, when Tommy put his faith in the Lord, and when Tommy, no matter what age or where he was, and when that happened, that's the life that counts eternity. And what I challenge you today is this. I challenge you to share his life. Man, to talk about him and, and talk with his aunts and his uncle and, and the ones that grew up with him, share those stories. Some of you are going to laugh about Others you will cry about. Others you say, we can't talk about. But that's family. That's family. So I ask you today, how is your relationship? If something happened to you and they picked up the phone and they called me, he as Denise did, and they said, Tommy, we need some help. I thought about you and I want to know if you can help us out. What would he say about you? What can he say to the family? What can he say to encourage them? You see, it's very important that we know where we're going to spend eternity. It's very important because we are every day writing a chapter about our life. And not only do the people around us can say, I can add to that chapter, I can put something in. But God has pinned down from the time you were born to the time you died. And that's the story that is so important. You see, everyone in here has faults and failures and sins and shortcomings and things of that nature. But what have we done with Jesus that counts? We celebrate 76 years of a life of a dad, a brother, an uncle, a cousin, a friend, a neighbor. We celebrate his life. And we celebrate it According to what the Bible says. And the Bible teaches us that all men were created equal in the eyes of God. And down here we have a body that is temporarily used, but we have an eternity that we're going to live forever, where there is no more sickness and sorrow and suffering and pain and disappointments and heartaches. None of that in heaven. And that's what we need to look to. Because God has made it that once do we depart from here, there's a better place where there's no more suffering that we ever go through in life. No more sin and no 
the Lord's sake. We just choose God. Let's bow for a moment of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do with this next song that we're about to play, The Lighthouse. I pray that it be a blessing and encouragement to this family. We pray in Jesus' name.
hug each other, hold each other, help each other, cry with each other, sit down with each other, share Tommy's life. This is how you get through it. The second way you get through it is because friends. I, I assume these 70 year old. I've seen that God always sends the right people at the right time in our lives. And he'll send your a friend by, whether it's a neighbor, a co-worker, or just a stranger by to say, I love you and pray for you. I just want to come by and tell you I was thinking about you. Sometimes it's just a hat, sometimes it's a hug, sometimes it's a boob, sometimes it's it's just their very presence. But that's how we get through it. Because God sends somebody by to help us. But the last way you're going to get through it is this. It's your faith. It's your walk with the Lord. It's your willingness to let God be God in your life. Trust Him. Turn to Him. Tell Him. Allow Him to be your strength, your help, your refuge, your deliverer. I want to close by saying in John 14, and it's, it's a great chapter, verse 1 through 6. It was the night that Jesus was dying and fixed to go to the cross. He looked at his disciples and he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And since I go and prepare a place for you, I come and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you shall be also. Did you know that promise was to Tommy too? He might not have the luxuries and the mansions down here. And he said, and it's not anybody building this, I go to prepare a place for you. And what God does, he does right. And he said, and one of his disciples are like you and I, I don't know the way. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how do we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father. Let's pray. Father, we once again thank you for the life of Tommy Lee. We thank you for all the lives that he has touched in these 76 years. The memories that he has left behind to family, to friends, to neighbors, to co-workers, to all. And now, Father, we ask you to comfort the family. Lord, each member. Lord, whether it's the daughter, the son, the grandchildren, the sisters, the brother, whoever it might be, and those that are gathered here today to remember how short life really is, how fragile life is. And Lord, that one day we'll all go the same way that Tommy did. And Lord, that we one day will stand before you Lord, may we always put you first and foremost in our lives. And we thank you. We praise.